Hello and welcome to another episode of DVTV, bringing you the next wave of digital video. I'm your host, Tony Rialli, and today we're going to talk about lighting ratios. Now, if you've ever heard about lighting ratios, uh, it may be a little confusing of a topic uh, because it's, you're, there's a lot of different things you're working with. You're looking at a ratio number, if you're familiar with uh, f-stops. Uh, they're measured two different ways, and we're going to explain that uh, today. Uh, first thing to real about, realize about lighting ratios is simply that uh, a, a ratio is your uh, amount of light from your key light to your fill light. Right now on Jimmy, we have an even lighting across both of the lights. So if I were to take my light meter here, walk over to Jimmy, I measure on this side, I've got an F8. I measure on this side, I've got an F8 as well. So between the two of these lights, we have a one-to-one -one ratio because they're both the same amount of light being thrown at him. Now, if we wanted to uh, add some contrast to that, this is kind of like a high key look, fashion or comedy or, or stuff like that. This is a fine look, but if you wanna add some drama, that's where you might increase the ratio. Now, there's lots of ways to adjust the exposure of a light or to, to decrease it. Um, and we're gonna go over uh, several of those methods right now. Uh, right here, we have some LEDs set up. Uh, you may be familiar with tungsten or fluorescent. Those are probably the most common lights that you're gonna work with. Uh, each light, uh, can be adjusted a little differently. For tungsten and for LEDs, you could use a dimmer. Now, nice thing about a dimmer, this is an impact dimmer. You can adjust it down. You can't go all the way down. Once you hit around 20% on a, on a tungsten, you might get a little flicker. So at that point, you probably would wanna use uh, just a lower wattage bulb. The other thing that happens when you use tungsten and you dim it, because you're sending less power through it, the color temperature actually warms up. For some people, this is a nice look. I, I know a lot of DPs that will use a one or a 2K light and dim it down to say 600 watts rather than using a 650 because then that creates a much warmer tone and it's a nice look. Uh, of course, you could gel a light to get that same effect as well, but this is an, an option they have. But just so you know, if you're trying to get exactly color matching lights, dimming isn't necessarily the best option. All right, here we've got scrims. Uh, we've got a single and we have a double scrim. These are great for putting over incandescent tungsten lights and you can cut down the light. Now, the nice thing about these is they don't uh, affect the look of the light. Because of the way they're designed, the light still shines through it. It's still a hard light. You're not softening the light at all. So these are great, but these, again, are designed to work with specific. This is for a 1K and this is for a 650. They cover that light. If you have a different kind of light, you might use something like an ND gel. This is a neutral density gel. It's gray gel that is designed to uh, not change the color of the light. So it's not like a color temperature blue or a color temperature orange gel that would change the color of the light. This is just gray gel that goes over the light. You can get this in various stops to bring down the light intensity. Likewise, uh, similar to the scrim, this is a net. So this again cuts down on the light intensity without uh, changing any of the quality or the properties of the light. You can get these in singles and doubles as well. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with diffusion. You can get uh, lots of different types of diffusion material. This will change the nature of the light. It'll make a hard light soft, it'll make a soft light softer. Um, so this will cut down on the intensity of the light, but it will not necessarily um, maintain the look of the light. If you want a hard light and you'd put through diffusion, of course, it's no longer gonna be hard. But this will also affect the exposure as well. And then finally, of course, we have LED lights. Now, this light, uh, this is from ICANN. This is really nice because you can actually see the readout. Um, most lights have the LED lights have the dimmers on the back, but this one you can actually see exactly where you are. So on the other light, we're at 100%. I can bring this down to 50. And now we have uh, now effectively a, a two to one. So the key light is two times as bright as the fill light. And this gives us a little bit of a uh, more dramatic look. Now, if we wanted to go even further, we could go down to 25% and then we would have a four to one. So this light is four times brighter than this light. It's two stops different, but it's four times brighter. The way that we measure stops of light is every stop is either doubling or having the light of the previous stop. So if you do that, uh, basically measure kind of in uh, powers, you know, two to the first power would be two to the second power would be four, to the third power would be eight. So if we were to take this down to like 12%, now we would have an eight to one. So this light is eight times brighter. Even though it's only a three stop difference, 
this light is now effectively eight times brighter than the other light. Now, if we go back to 100% on this, there's one last way to change the exposure of a light, and that has to deal with the inverse square law. Now, if you've ever heard of that, it's, it may be a little confusing, a little daunting, but it's really, really easy to understand once you get it in your head. Effectively, the way the inverse square law works is if you measure the distance from your light to your subject, and you double that, you will effectively reduce the output of the light by one fourth. The reason is, if I double the distance, so right now, this light is five feet from Jimmy. So if I were to take my tape measure and measure out from Jimmy, you can hold that, Jimmy. We measure out to 10 feet right here. And we take this light and we move it to 10 feet. So now this light is one quarter of the power that it was before. Now, why is that? We double the distance, wouldn't that be one half? Well, the way that light works is when you double the distance, it's now being spread over four times the area. So twice as high and twice as wide. That's one fourth of the intensity on the subject. Now, what if you just wanted to have that distance? Well, you just basically, instead of moving it twice as far, you move it 1.5 times as far. So from five feet, that would be seven and a half feet out. So we measure that out right here. We bring the light back in. And now, effectively, we have a two to one ratio. We didn't dim the light, we didn't add any, any other modifiers to it, we just simply moved the light backwards. So these are all, all ways that you can affect the light. Lighting ratios is really the basic for everything. And the nice thing is when you use a light meter, you can measure out these ratios and say you're doing interviews across multiple locations or having to redo a setup that you did later, you can measure out the lighting ratio and then be able to match it exactly the way that you had before. You're not just guessing anymore. And if you want a specific look, say you're communicating with your director or creative director or someone that wants a specific look, you can communicate in that lighting ratio and they can understand what you're doing. So I hope that's helpful. Be sure to subscribe and check out our future videos.